Where did I leave off? Let's see here. First Peter. Where are you, Pete? Come on. That's Second Peter. First Peter, chapter. We did chapter three: wives and husbands and all that. I do recall. Chapter four. Where were we say? Okay. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. Christ suffered in the flesh. Arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. Hmm. I need to suffer in the flesh. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So I have to, okay. You do not do that. So as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer, I'm sorry, as to live, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. That's a tough one. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do. Gentiles meaning non-believers. Living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery and they malign you. I hope you're being maligned, Christian. That way you know you're on the right track. But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. That's interesting. But they will give account, speaking of the study of respect, with respect to this, they are surprised, meaning the Gentiles, the non-believer, when you do not join them in the same, debauch, same flood of debauchery and they malign you. But they, non-believers, will give account. Interesting. To him who is ready to judge, you know who that is, ready to judge the living of the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. Live like God does. Have you heard that one before? That might be new to you. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled, sober-minded. For the sake of your prayers. There we go again. For the, what did he say before the last chapter? You now do this, this, and this, so you do not hinder your prayers. Well, wait a minute. If I'm not praying, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. But if I am praying, but I'm doing these things that are not, I'm not on the track, then my prayers are hindered, meaning they're not being heard. And I might as well just skip the whole John 14 thing. Where was I? The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled, sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Think about that. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly. We're going into the campaign season. we got a, a, a elections coming up, okay? This is a, for me, I'll go back to my history with elections and politics and all that. It makes me a hating, ticked off, PO'd um, person that has to divide people, us and them, or me and them kind of thing. It just, it puts, it's not, I would have to say that when I am in politics, I am no longer loving one another earnestly. Instead of praying for these people that maybe disagree with me, um, I'm certainly not to be getting into this resentful, you know, these stupid people and all this kind of thing. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied, varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you 
as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings. Are you a suffering Christian? <laughs> as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. So here you go. You're going to do this Christian walk, and the people around you, friends, family, they're not part of it. They think you're a fool, or whatever the case is, or maybe they mock you, or as I said previously in this chapter, um, blah, 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 where it says here, since you're not drinking the drink, but let's see here, um, and they malign you, okay? Status quo pop culture thinks you're a, a racist or a homophobe and all this kind of stuff, because maybe you're following the teachings of Jesus and all that. If all that is happening to you, just remember, rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad. And it says here, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. You want the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you? Take your arrows. That's why... you. you you want to, as a Christian, you want to go boldly but humbly. You don't want to be one of these street preachers that's, you know, doing their thing, uh, uh, judging everyone and this kind of thing and other. But you still, you want to be boldly for what you believe in. You want to stand for what you believe in. Make sure that that people know, oh, this guy's a Christian. Oh, you, don't invite this guy to the party. He's a real buzzkill. Well, he's not going anyway because he's a Christian. He knows what you're going to do at that party. See? And then they malign you, and then you're blessed. How sweet it is. Rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Stay in your lane. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, meaning someone who's walking the walk, if you suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. That's Christians. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And, it says in quotes, if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Hmm. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. And you'll be blessed. First Peter chapter 4. Love you, God bless.